What up, what up, Wimbush here. In an Unreal Engine, I'm gonna show you how we can make a cloner behave like a particle emitter all in real time using the motion design tools. And we're gonna build it all out completely from scratch. So to get started, we're inside our Unreal Engine project browser here. And as you can see, in film video and live events, we have these templates here and we're gonna start with the motion design template because this is gonna have everything turned on that we need. And when you open up Unreal Engine, you're gonna be greeted with a scene that looks just like this, but we're gonna start completely from scratch. So down here inside a content browser, I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna come up here to where it says level and I'm gonna start a new level. And I'm just gonna name this one tutorial, hit enter, and then I'm gonna double click on it. And now this save content window is gonna pop up. You're just gonna hit save selected and now we can start building our scene out completely from scratch. So the first thing we want to do is up here in the top left hand corner where it says selection mode. We're going to left click on this and then we're going to come down here to motion design. And then there's one more thing we need to do. We need to come over here towards the middle where it says motion design. We're going to left click on this. And now we almost have everything we need to get started, but we do need like our cameras and our lights and everything for the scene. So over here in the left hand corner where it says create defaults, you want to left click on this. And then down here in the middle, it says configure default scene actors. We just want to leave everything on and we're going to click on spawn. So now over here, inside of our motion design outliner, if I scroll this down, you can see that we have our lights, we have our camera, and we have a post pros volume, and we have everything we need to get started. So let's start off by creating a backdrop so we're not completely stuck in the void here. So over on our left hand side where we see rectangle, I'm going to double click on this twice. And now you see we have a rectangle in the middle of our scene. So we want to make this engulf our entire scene here. And in order to do that, we want to come down here to the bottom to where it says align actors. You want to left click on this and we're going to come up with two options. We see actors and we see screen. So we want to left click on the screen and then down here in the bottom right hand corner, it says stretch all the way to the actor screen. So when you click on this, now this backdrop is going to engulf our entire scene and we can actually add color to this. So it's not so gray. So with our rectangle selected, we're just gonna scroll down here inside of our details panel until we see materials, which is right here. And I'm just gonna start with a primary color and let's just make this like an orangish color, somewhere around there. And I'm gonna click okay. Now, if you wanted to get fancy with it right here where it says material style and solid, you can always add like a gradient color if you want, or you can always add your own textures as well. Now let's get to the fun part. We're gonna add a cloner in here. So over on the left-hand side, we should see this button here that says cloners. And this is new for 5.6. We actually have a couple of default templates over here and we're gonna start with the one that says sphere random. So I'm gonna double click on this. And once we do in the middle of our scene, you can now see we have a randomized cloner inside of here, but it's also touching our backdrop because remember everything is built out in 3D space. So I'm gonna take my rectangle and I'm gonna come down here inside of my locations and I'm just gonna move this backup tab bit and it's not gonna engulf our entire scene still, but we can always just adjust it accordingly. So down here where it says uniform scale of size, I'm gonna just scroll this up until we fill up our scene again. And now we should be good. Now, the reason we had to do that is because Unreal Engine works in true 3D space. And so everything will be colliding within each other. And so we just had to push it back a bit so our cloner doesn't go through our background. But back to our cloner in here, by default, it's gonna come up with these different type of cubes in here in which I'm gonna delete these and I'm gonna put in spheres because spheres are just a lot more fun. So over here on our left-hand side again, where it says 3D shape, I wanna left click on this and we're gonna click on sphere, but we're gonna double click it. So it pops up in the middle of our scene. Now back over here, inside of our motion design outliner, I'm gonna left click and drag this under our cloner so now you can see we have our sphere on our randomized sphere within our clone. But let's start making this act like a particle system and then we'll go back and adjust accordingly. So with our cloner selected in our material outliner, down here where it says emission, I'm gonna left click on this and this is gonna be the trick right here. So where it says lifetime, we wanna left click on enable and now you can see that these disappeared and that's because it's now acting like an emitter and right here where it says emission mode, we only had it clicked on once and that's why they disappeared. But if we left click on this and we go to infinite, now you can see the particles are populating our scene and they're just popping off just like a particle emitter, right? But we don't want it to be so sporadic. So down here under lifetime where it says max, let's make it about 10. And that's going to keep them on screen for about 10 seconds there. And for a minimum, let's hit zero. So now we're starting to see that it's acting like an emitter, but it's not truly acting like particles would behave. But if we come back over here, lifetime, where it says scale enabled, if we left click on this, now you can see that they're starting to get smaller as they get older. And so down here, let me actually pull this up a little bit so we can see it better. But down here, we have this section called templates. Now, if you left click on this down arrow, 
you can see that we have a couple of templates down here and this is going to be for a scale effect so this is the one that i actually like right here where it says pulse out if i left click on this you can see that it changed our curve graph here and if i click inside my viewport now you can see that the spheres they're going to come up really fast and then they're just going to slowly get smaller now this is giving us a nice effect but you might notice that the spheres are actually engulfing on top of each other there's no type of kickback of any sort but we can actually add now collision this is new within 5.5 but they're upgrading to 5.6 so let's get these spheres to actually collide against each other to give us a more natural effect so what my cloner selected here if we look over here we have right beside a mission it says physics so i'm going to left click on this and right here we have surface collision and we have particle collision now we want to have both selected here but let me show you what each one of these does now when i click on particle collision you can see now we're starting to get some type of feedback whenever the particles are starting to come through but if we add surface collision we can see now it's a lot more finite so actually when these particles are growing they're pushing each other out of the way and if you wanted to make it a little bit more pushy down here where we have mass max, this is going to be the weight of your particle mesh. So I put mine up to three, but let me put it up to 10 because if we put it up to 10, now these particles are going to be a lot more heavier and they're going to push each other a lot further away. But just messing around with the attributes show you what kind of results we could get when you start playing around. But also under collisions right here where we see collision iteration right now it's on one but if you just hover above it it's going to tell you that the amount of iterations will approve the particle collision but it also affects the performance so if you have a higher end card you can definitely crank this up i think the highest it goes up to is 10 which that's what i'm going to do right there and that's going to give you a better definition within your particle collisions but be leery because if you do have like a lower spec system this is going to slow your system down so if you have a high-end system crank it all the way up if you have a mid-tier just play around with it to see what's comfortable for you and that's going to be it so if you're interested in my project file make sure you leave a comment down below but if you wanted to add like the emojis on these different spheres how i had inside my example i could definitely show you real quick how we can use the material designer to make that happen so i'm going to click on my sphere here and once i do instead of my details panel if I come down here to materials, I'm going to come down here to where it says material type. Now I'm going to left click on simple and I'm going to click on material designer. And for this example, we're just going to use PBR because that's what most 3D artists are going to know. So I'm going to click on continue. And now you can see we have all these different tabs in here in which for the base color, this is where I'm going to drop my material. So down here inside of my content browser, I have all these different emojis that I made. And let's maybe start with the angry one. So I'm just going to left click drag it right here under textures and now you can see right off the bat we have this angry emoji in here and you could definitely go through and change these out accordingly like if you wanted to change the roughness come over here we have like the roughness down to like 0.5 we could bring the specular down to 0.5 you can play with these until you get the shininess that you want but another trick is too if we come over here i'm actually going to turn off my directional light and it's going to make it really bland like that right and that's because now everything is being lit by our skylight and the reason i did that was because our skylight can actually hold hdrs inside of there so if i come back to my content browser i have a couple of hdrs that i grabbed offline but i'm using this one right here this is studio 11 so all you have to do is left click and drag it under the cube map and now it's going to light our scene accordingly and this is going to give us a better lighting situation than if we use the directional light but it's definitely up to the artist on what kind of desired effects you're going to get then if we wanted to take it another step further and actually have these spin around so they're just not all me mugging us if i come over here let me click on my cloner and then right here under effector i'm going to left click on this section right here under my details panel and i'm going to click on create linked effector now this is going to create an effector in which if i come down here under shape where it says sphere i'm just going to make everything unbound so anything i do on my effector is just going to affect everything that we see inside of our cloner here and again let me move this up a tiny bit because i want to come down here to where it says forces now where it says forces i want to enable it and then i'm going to scroll down a tiny bit more and let's start with the orientation force enable so i'm going to turn this on and this is where we're going to change out our rotation so right here where we have max i'm just going to put these all up at one and now you can see that we're starting to get a little rotation in there i mean we can actually pump it up a lot more so let's just hit five so we can exaggerate it and then for the negative let's do negative five on these like so so now you see when the spheres come out they're actually starting to turn their heads a little bit so you just go through here play with your effectors and come up with some really cool results like if i come down here to like curl noise force enable left click on this 
now we're going to start getting some curl effects in here let me really ramp this up to like 500 and this is how i did it inside my example right so now we can see that our particles are starting to get curled they're starting to fly at the camera and we're just getting some really neat effects in here so just with the cloner everything is just going through and experimenting and coming up with some really cool results and then let's say we didn't want to just have like these angry faces here if you come over to your sphere and you hit Control d on your keyboard and after it's done compiling shaders that's going to duplicate it and then all you have to do is click on your edit material designer come back over here to base color and then i'm just going to drag and drop maybe the sick face in there so now we have an angry face and now we have this sick face in there and you can just keep duplicating those and adding your materials on there and coming up with some really neat effects and it's as easy as that so i had a ton of fun just going in there experimenting seeing if i could get this behave like a particle emitter because this is built off of the niagara particle system so at the heart of it it is particles at the end but leave me a comment down below let me know what kind of stuff you guys come up with and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i catch you in that next video i see you soon take care